Real quick, tomorrow, April 20th at 3 p.m., I will be live streaming with Origin PC, building a super high-end gaming PC. We're going to be hanging out, talking tech, talking YouTube, talking to you guys. Come check it out. Link down below to the stream. Welcome back everybody. I'm extremely excited for this video because it's keyboards like this that make doing what I do on this channel so much fun. This is the Mistel Baraco Split mechanical keyboard coming in at a whopping $180, a hefty price tag. Let's find out if it's worth it. Of course, I'll be giving one away. All you gotta do to win is one, subscribe to the channel, and hit that little bell, two, like the video, and three, comment down below something interesting. When the video reaches 10,000 likes, I'll announce the winner in a comment down below. So starting with an overview, we have a white on white look, which looks really good with the RGB LEDs. I'll talk more about those later. Of course, we have the split in the middle of the keyboard that makes this keyboard special, and I'll talk more about that specifically later as well. Uh, but around back, we have a bunch of rubber pads and two raised feet with rubber pads on either half. So there's a lot of stability there and a lot of good angle, because if they only had two raised feet total, like each half individually would like be lopsided. So it makes sense they have two on each. And then on the top, there's actually five different ports, and they're kind of hard to keep track of. There are two mini USB ports. Either one can be used to connect it to a computer. I'm using this one along with the included braided mini USB cable. There are two micro USB ports in the middle that are used to connect either side of the keyboard with the included rubber coiled micro USB cable. And then there's one last micro USB port all the way on the right that could be used to connect a number pad on the side. So five ports up there. That's a, that's a lot of stuff to deal with. In terms of build quality, it is made out of all plastic. It's not that bad. It's not that big of a deal. It's a solid nice white plastic that's smooth to the touch doesn't feel like it's gonna wear or tear at, at all it just honestly it feels I right. I guess they could have put in a little metal here and there maybe on the side or something I don't know I'm not that worried about it I think the plastic's fine in terms of layout it's a normal 60% keyboard uh, there is like a weird menu and PN key down here to adjust the lighting and profiles and stuff as well as the FN key so that's a little weird but other than that all the important keys are normal like the shift and enter backspace and letter keys all normal stuff there very good to see but then of course it does split down the middle so I don't know what you call that layout really you can put your mouse in the middle you can do really whatever you want it's supposedly more ergonomic for your wrists I guess I don't really know but it does split down the middle keycaps are probably the best part of this keyboard. Honestly, these are double shot PBT keycaps and they are some of the best keycaps that I've ever used. So good job for using great keycaps, Miss Toll. Miss Tell? Miss Toll? Miss Toll. Moving on to LEDs, there are RGB LEDs in here. You know, controlling them, it took me a long time to figure out how to control them. I still don't really know every single setting that can be controlled. The user manual is not great, and there's no software for it, so it's all just in the keys. You have to use the PN button, and you can cycle through different types of modes. You can see the rainbow mode right there. And like by default, it was going really fast, and I didn't know how to turn it down for a long time. Figured out that it was PN, and then the, I don't even know what you call that, like the period key, uh, with the, the, the greater than sign. Uh, but then, interestingly, if you want to change the color of it when it's on solid, you actually hit PN, you hold PN, and then you can adjust the color palette with the 1, 2, and 3 key. So basically, you adjust how strong the reds are, how strong the greens are, and how strong the blues are in relation to each other. It's just similar to how you would like if you were color correcting an image, where you control the red level, the blue level, and the green level separately. That's how you control what color shows up when it's a solid color. Really weird way of doing it instead of just cycling between the colors, but interesting. And lastly, on the switches, this specific one has Cherry MX Reds. You had different options available. I just hadn't had Reds in a while, and I figured it would be a good time to try it, because that was the only option with Amazon Prime, and I love Amazon Prime. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Reds are the linear ones, typically used for gaming, but also I know a lot of people that prefer them for typing. And of course, what type of MS Tech video would this be without a typing test, but not just one, two. I'm gonna do one just with it attached and together, like a normal 60% keyboard to test the Cherry MX Red switches and stuff. And then one with it split to see how well I can adjust to the split. Now, obviously, if you're using it as a split, there's gonna be a learning curve to get to used to it really well. And I haven't gone through that learning curve, so it's definitely gonna be slower than when it's together, but it'll be interesting to see how much harder it is to type on when it's split. Anyway, we're starting with it together.
All right, so with it together, 108 words per minute, which uh, is faster than I thought. I typically don't like Cherry MX Reds that much because there's no real tactility, but uh, it was a pretty easy text to write out. So, you know, that sounds about right. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and split it and see what type of difference that makes. I'm gonna go with like an average split like this. Nothing crazy, just like that. All right, 74 words per minute. Honestly, that's about what I was expecting because obviously the border keys that where it's actually split are tough because when I type it with it together, like I'll use my left hand to hit Y sometimes and with this, I have to use my right hand. So there are a few keys there that are obviously gonna be a mix up and slow me down. But then there's also just the mental aspect of your hands being so far away that you're not used to it. So I found myself making more mistakes anyway. So that's definitely something I would need to get used to to be able to type at the same speed I would otherwise. Conclusion time. Is the Mistel Baraco split keyboard worth it at $180? That's very expensive. Now, if you really believe in the ergonomics of a split keyboard and you type a lot or you're a coder or something like that, then it could be a great investment. It is a really high quality mechanical keyboard, great keycaps, great switches. It's real Cherry MX switches in there. Uh, the LEDs look great. The build quality is great. It's trustworthy. So it has a lot going for it and it's a very premium product. But for the majority of people out there looking for a keyboard, it's just a little unnecessary, I'd say. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to see more content. And as always, stay classy. That was weird.